Hi everyone, my name is Clever, and I really like creating and developing things that can help in the everyday life. Because of that, I became a big fan of 3D printing so I bought an Ender 3. I looked for a printer that was used by everyone and had as much online support as possible because I'm nosy and I like to know how things work. The interesting part of the 3D printing community is that it likes to hack, change and improve everything. And let's be honest, the most interesting part of having a 3D printer is the ability to improve it. What I ended up doing was creating an enclosure that helps the printer print with other types of filaments, protects it, and, as a bonus, is a place to store some important things. And I achieved this only using four elements, MDF, glass, screws and 3D printed parts. If you're already used to print with a 3D printer, I don't really need to explain exactly what an enclosure for, but for those who doesn't know an enclosure helps to print with other types of filaments, such as ABS, TPU and nylon, having a much better print result. Because of the type of material ABS and TPU usually don't print very well when they have contact with drafts. When the print reaches a certain height the difference in temperature between the nozzle and the layers ends up becoming too large and the material tends to shrink, which ends up with the characteristic crack in the print. That's what you need an enclosure for. An enclosure will trap heat inside of it, making the temperature constant and high, free from drafts. When printing is finished, the temperature gradually drops, causing the whole print to shrink evenly, thus preventing cracking. And it was with this idea that I created my enclosure, using the most used printer as a base, the Ender 3. I wanted to create an enclosure that would solve as many problems as possible using all the printer's original parts, of course with a margin for improvement. Now I need to take a break to talk about fire hazards. Even though my enclosure is safe and has no parts near the hottest areas it is still made of wood, just like any other DIY made enclosure. Whenever you're going to print, don't leave the printer unattended. To make this enclosure I tried to make it as safe as possible by keeping the electrical components away from excessive heat because I saw many printers inside hotboxes and this could be dangerous. At the end of the day you are responsible for your safety and if you try to make this enclosure you are aware of the risks of any 3D printer DIY projects. Safety first. As a bonus I've come to realize that my enclosure is a good place to remove the moisture from the filaments and can also double as a photo booth. So for starters, I needed to measure the entire printer, figure out where it moved and where I would put the electronics. First I was going to put them inside the enclosure, but on the inside it can reach 40 degrees Celsius, at this temperature, the life cycle of electronics can decrease a lot. So I decided to put all the electronics on the outside. But then I came across another problem, the printer wires are different sizes, and the level 0 cable is too short so I can't leave the motherboard too far away from the printer body. We are still trying to maintain the initial idea of not modifying the printer so we will have to work with what we have. It turned out that it was not a big problem. To separate the elements from the hot part of the enclosure, the easiest way is to put everything on the bottom. Why? When hot air rises, cold air descends. That's why when you open your fridge the first part of your body to get cold is your feet. I use this to my advantage. The enclosure gradually heats up from top to bottom. This gradient decreases as it gets to the base and when it gets close to the motherboard we have an air opening that makes the components much less hot. For this reason I also reduced the height of the enclosure, because the closer to the printer the faster the environment will heat up, and for that I had to change the filament placement. So we were able to adjust the temperature issue. Now how are we going to design on top of that? Since the components were at the bottom, and we're using 3mm MDF, we need to think about the structure. To ensure that the printer does not break or bend the base, we need to create beams and columns, just like a house. After measuring the printer for the hundredth time I found the ideal path for the beams. Some of them extend to the floor, I use them to put the drawer. I'll get to them in a moment. With the beams created I can put the holes for the motherboard, and that was my first mistake, you can see the space between the beam and the motherboard. I created this space so that my finger can put the micro SD, no problem, but when I put together my first version, well. Behind the motherboard is the power supply, and in front is the monitor. I thought it was beautiful in concept but after I built it, I hated it, so this monitor will have to go. As there was a lot of space at the bottom, I thought about putting a drawer, because we always need a small space to put our tools. A very small, simple drawer, just to store one or two things. Here I got to my second mistake, I made the drawer too close to the walls and it keeps getting stuck. I will note here for version 2.0. Now the most important part, the heat chamber. I wanted to make a door that was accessible to the entire printer, because the designs I saw either had a gap that was too big, which let the heat escape, or a door that was too small, which made it difficult to maintain the printer. 
I believe that I can make a door that closes properly and that when it opens I can have access much easier than the small doors and that holds the heat without problems. In my sketches I have the idea I had here. A door that opens with a 180 degrees hinge. With this type of door I can have access to the entire printer without having to take it out whenever I need to. And here is the result of it. A beautiful door that opens giving access to the printer. And here I made another mistake. See this hole. I had put the filament here because I thought it was visually interesting. Well Reddit made me see the mistake I made in a very polite way. Being at 90 degrees from the printer, the filament has a much more tendency to kink, and that's exactly what happened with my filament. So I had to do more measurements to find the ideal place for the filament and this was the place that is least likely to kink. Now with the top part done, just start printing. But first I need to solve this problem. The ceiling, being very thin, keeps bending, but we only need to put two beams, here, easy. In the end, everything turned out the way I wanted. Now prints comes out beautifully done, the internal temperature easily reaches 40 degrees and the printer stays clean and dust free longer. But that's not enough. Let's make version 2 using everything we learned from the mistakes of the first version. First, I noticed that the enclosure would make an excellent photo booth, I just needed to take the printer out, when I noticed that it is fully attached to the frame, so I need to sort this out first. To solve this problem I made this part that the motherboard is attached, but that can be removed when I need to do maintenance or when I want to do a photo shoot. I also noticed that I have enough space to put the filaments in the upper back, which leaves them much more in contact with the heat, pulling out moisture. My first version was supposed to be glued together, but in order to use this enclosure as a photo booth I needed it to be snapped together so I changed these two pieces. Don't worry everything is included in the PDF. I also created a guide made out of Teflon tube and I will use it to guide the filament without any bending. I don't suggest using it without the tube because you know what happens when there is friction for a very long period, right? Oh yeah, I noticed that even though it's well cut, there might still be some kind of opening for the heat to come out. For this I made a guide that closes the door easily and helps to keep the heat inside. What else? Thinking about using this printer always inside the enclosure, I had to find a way to print with PLA without problems, since this type of filament suffers deformation at temperatures above 30 degrees. For this I made two ventilation pieces that use the physical properties of hot air, causing hot air to come out and cold air to concentrate inside the enclosure. Keeping the temperature that used to be 42, max, 32. So many changes, what else can I do to make this enclosure perfect? Well, we still have the issue of the drawer sticking, let's change it up a bit so it can open and close without any problems, great. Now for the final touch. That was the point where I gave up on doing something super simple, because I wanted to do something really interesting. For the design to be simplified and at the same time functional I created this monitor. It has access to all printing information and just below it there is a slot for a micro SD extension, but don't worry, if you don't have an extension, you can access the motherboard through this removable panel that I put here. And it's not the end of everything. There's still this small change. So after all these changes we have, our enclosure basically the same as the previous one. But that's not a problem for me, changes in a design doesn't mean starting from scratch, the improvements I've created are functional and now I think my enclosure is ready to make a wonderful print, let's try it with a white ABS and see what we achieved. A voila! A crack free print with minimal warping and incredible quality. I am very proud to have been able to make a structure with so few materials, I have been using this enclosure for months now and I can say that I am very happy with the results. For me where I live it is very cheap and I managed to do this project with $30. I would like to know if the value varies that much in your country, and if other materials, such as acrylic, would be more interesting. Comment below how much was yours so we can have an idea. This is the first video in a series and in the next one I'll explain how I put it together. If you like this project don't worry, I'm leaving a PDF file in the link below and I'm opening a thread on Reddit so you can post your assemblies and problems that you may have found, I'm dying to see what you can do with that enclosure. I created a Patreon, if I have enough helpers I'll make a series of improvements to this enclosure and who knows enclosures for other printers as well. So the last question I can ask is, did you like this video? If you like my project and think I deserve a subscription just click the button below and if you want to be notified of upcoming projects just click the bell. That's all for today folks, thank you so much for watching this video, and see you in the next one. Don't forget, you can create whatever you want. Bye bye.